A question I see over and over again is people asking what carburetor they should get, or what size I guess they should get, and what main jet should they run. Uh, the first question is legitimate, and uh, asking around is the best way to find out. The second question should never be asked. Um, what main jet people are running has no bearing on what you should run. It's going to cover general how to start tuning these things, where to even begin. That's a bit overwhelming. So we're going to basically turn air into a mixture of air and fuel so it can go on the engine. What size do you get? Um, the size is usually on the intake side. You measure the uh, inside diameter of the hole. And this one's supposed to be a 22 millimeter. It's 21.8, and that's pretty close. So if someone tells you to get a 22 millimeter carburetor, and that's a good starting point. But just be cautious that this is the measurement that you get from the manufacturer. The inside can look way different. A lot of the Makuni style carburetors do choke down smaller. A 22 millimeter carburetor may choke down less or more than this one. So all 22s are not created equal. This one actually is a PZ22. It performs about like a like a 19 millimeter carburetor. The VM22 that's real popular with the uh, mini bike guys, that's, uh, that one doesn't choke down near as much as this one. So you've just got that new Predator 212 or maybe a GY6, or you just want to upgrade your uh, stock emissions carburetor or maybe your California carburetor or the lawnmower style carburetor that came on your mini bike and you want to upgrade it to a uh, Makuni style some kind of smooth bore but what size do you get? You can go online and find charts that compare the size of displacement to the size of carburetor that's a pretty good starting point and of course asking your buddies is a good starting point but the 212 probably comes around 17 millimeters and I'm just guessing that well you don't want to put a 17 millimeter carb on there because you want room to grow and uh, so a lot of guys run these 22s but then you don't want to go too big either what the carburetor does is it starts out larger it gets smaller and then opens up again that's a venturi and what that does is when the air is being pulled through it and you restrict the air into a smaller area it accelerates the air that acceleration creates your vacuum to pull the fuel up in here if you get too big of a carburetor The air going in the cylinder doesn't have the volume to really accelerate that much as it's choked down in the venturi. And without that acceleration of the air, you're not going to pull fuel into it properly. It's not going to atomize properly and make a good mixture for combustion. So going too big of a carburetor is more detrimental than running too small of one to how the engine performs. And I know your buddies are going to tell you, oh yeah, I run 28 millimeters, I run uh, 30, and they're going to give you all these big sizes. Um, and they base that on a lot of things. A lot of these guys on YouTube, you know, you take a Jay-Z or Day-Day and they're running, you know, they're running 800 Holly double pumpers on their mini bikes. But you don't have those engines. Um, yeah, the carburetor is not there to give you more power. The carburetor is there to support the power that your engine has. So those guys that build these engines that do 12,000 RPMs, and uh, yeah, they, they can support a big carburetor. But typically, with your stage one and stage two mods that you're doing to your engine, you're not gonna support that big of a carburetor. But you still want room to grow. So uh, typically guys stick around the 22 to 24 millimeter range for their 212s. The second question of what jet size to run is uh, never follow the advice of someone that tells you they're running a certain jet. It just, it's not going to work. Um, altitude plays a big difference. Uh, at a lower altitude, you can run a bigger jet. At a higher altitude, you need a leaner one. In humid environments that have a high humidity, you get less O2, you need a leaner jet. 
in high temperature environments. Higher temperature air is thinner, has less O2, need a leaner jet. The best thing you can do is jet your carburetor for your engine and nothing else. So in addition to your carburetor, if you want some jets, you know, an assortment of jets, I probably have 200 jets, but I'm showing three of them. So these are different size jets that you can swap out. If you have one of these weird carburetors that you can't find jets for, you tried to order them on eBay, they come in, they don't fit, you just can't figure it out, you can buy drill kits. Um, they have little drill bits in sets. The drill bits are numbered at just like a jet would be. So that's a 105. That's not the size of the drill bit. That's the size of the uh, jet that it would be if you drill this hole. The holes drill very easy. These are brass. So they're very easy to drill. When you do a drill, you go up, you go up one step at a time and no more. Because uh, obviously if you drill it out too big, you're screwed. But not completely. If you do drill it out too big, you can solder that hole back in with a soldering iron and some solder and some flux. And you can start the drilling process again through that solder. And it works. And to start adjusting your carburetor, you need to know how it works. Every carburetor is going to have these adjustments on them. Even the little stock one that comes in the lawnmower. You're going to have a throttle. And the throttle doesn't add more gas. The throttle is the way to add more air to your mixture. So more open throttle, more air. That air will pull in more gas and the mixture will be more fuel dense, but the throttle is an air control. It's going to let more air in. This one here, for example, is a constant velocity. So when you open the throttle, the butterfly valve opens, it lets more air in and deep inside there, there's a slider just like a smooth board and just the air rushing in pops it up. Some carburetors just have the butterfly valve only, and you'll see a choke in front of them. They'll have two butterfly valves, a choke one and a throttle one. But the carburetors you probably want are like the smooth bore Makunis, and they come in either round or flat slide. That's just the shape of the slide here. So when you pull the throttle up, that pulls up this slider right here. When that slide goes up, it allows more air in the carburetor and allows a higher volume and sucks more fuel. So the slide is one adjustment and that's controlled with your throttle cable. It's also, and I'm not, ta not talking about the needle here, just, just talking about this black portion. Just the slide, that's controlled with the throttle cable. It's also controlled with your idle screw. First confusion of your carburetor is what screw is what and what do I adjust? Well there's a screw on the float bowl that's yeah, purely to drain the fuel um, and just get rid of that other float bowl. So if you have a screw on the float bowl itself, it does nothing but drain fuel. So that one doesn't count. Get rid of that. You have two more screws. There's going to be a screw that kind of lines up with this slide. And that's your idle adjustment. And all it's doing is you could do the same thing by moving your throttle. And this carburetor here, uh, where we got it at. It doesn't go through and move the slide up. It actually, this screw actually turns and moves the butterfly valve open more. So that's how you set your RPMs you want it to idle at. You're just letting more air in. That's it. So the idle adjustment's right here. And if you pull it out, it's just a little pin. It screws in. It pushes right inside there. You see there's a little slot in there. Now there's a little slot on this side. That's just for alignment so you get this thing aligned right. But uh, there's a little slot right here. You can see there's wear marks on it. It's got some witness grooves from this pin hitting it. And the slot is ramped. So as you screw this in more, it pushes that slide up more. That's all it's doing. That's adjusting your idle. The other adjustment, they call it an air fuel mixture screw. The truth is, it's just going to let in fuel. The amount of air that's going in, we just adjusted with the idle. So the idle opens the slide or the butterfly and lets air in. But we need to add fuel to that because when the slide is all the way down, it can't pull fuel from the main jet 
and we'll get into that in a, just a second here. But we're not pulling fuel from the main jet because it's blocked by something. So uh, we need to pull fuel into this carburetor so it can idle and start. And this is going to allow you to do that. If you unscrew that, it's going to give you more fuel, which would be equivalent to less air for the, for the ratio. You screw it in, it gets leaner. And um, that fuel is picked up right down here in this low-end jet, or the pilot jet, they call it. And I may have some of these terms wrong, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So the main jets, the big one we all know, usually it'll be off to the side, the pilot jet will. Like this one here was, I must have pulled this one out. It goes in that hole right there was a pilot jet. And yeah, no, that's the main jet. And so the pilot jet will look like this. Pop it out of here. And um, that allows fuel to go in for starting and for idling. And that's about it. So that's controlled with this screw right here. It'll be the one, it won't be the float bolt screw, it won't be the idle screw, it'll be just the other screw on your carburetor. And uh, they can be in some funny places. Some of them are underneath the float bowl, under here. Some of them are on the side, on this carburetor here. Let's see. It's uh, right here. So they've got it right there. And um, a littler version of that same CV carburetor. It appears to be blocked. That's a factory cover. It's blocked right there with that. We can pop that off and there'll be a screw in there. They just don't want you adjusting it because that is California approved. You don't have the right to adjust your carburetor there. So back to this uh, air idle screw. You pop it out. All it does is block an orifice. There's a little spring in there. Keep tension on it. But it blocks an orifice in there. If you tighten it more, it blocks it more and lets less fuel in. If you open it, it lets more fuel in. And the fuel is coming through here. Some carburetors will actually block off the airflow to choke it. And you can see that airflow being blocked. And within there, there's a little flap in there. And so air has to push through that little flap to get in. And it creates a little more suction and uh, get, you, get you started when your engine's cold. But a lot of uh, carburetors will have an enriching jet and not a choke. See how this has a lever? Now if you look at a carburetor like this, a Makuni style, it's going to have a thing that flips up on the side. And this is probably what you're going to see more. That's an enriching jet. So if your engine runs with this pulled, but when you put it off, the engine dies, that's because this little jet right here is dirty and they get dirty really easy because the fuel sets in there and it contaminates and it gums up fairly simple to clean um, air pressure blow through it now you can stick a fine needle through it sometimes and um, you should be able to see daylight through it if you hold it up to the night sky or the day sky so if you hold it up to the sky you'll see day you'll see a little hole um, if you can't see daylight through it, it's clogged, and that's why you can't start your bike. And it'll run when you give it throttle, because once you give it throttle, you're not on this jet anymore. This jet is for starting and idling, and at 1 16th of a throttle, you're starting to use a different jet. So we don't need to worry about this. And we're adjusting our bike for top speed to make it fast, to make it powerful. This jet really doesn't matter. This is just so we can start it and idle it. But if we get this bike so crazy built that it won't even idle because this jet's too small, then we may have to change it. But it's not that important for what we're doing now. We're just trying to add a cool carburetor to our bike so we can do some performance mods. This jet that came in, it's going to work fine. It's going to take a long time to outgrow it. Because this only matters when it's idling and just off the throttle to give you that crisp little takeoff. So the jet we're all concerned with is the main jet. 
and that's in the bottom there. So what happens is the main jet during starting is blocked with this needle. There's your problem with starting and getting fuel. It can't get it because it's blocked. As you add throttle, this opens up. As you close throttle, it closes. You go back on your pilot jet. This needle position is adjustable. So the needle sits further down in that jet or further up. And that's a richer or leaner adjustment. Obviously, the further down the needle sets is leaner, the further up it sits is richer. And keep this in mind. Lean is good. Lean is crisp. Lean is responsive. Lean is great. Now, once you open this thing up and we're just running purely main jet, and this happens about, at, at I think at one-third throttle, this no longer applies. But honestly, at about a quarter throttle, you're almost all the way on the main jet. Now, on the main jet, the rich can be very good. So your needle sets like this with this little clip on it. And look how my needle sets. I've got it, not on the middle clip, but I usually take a carburetor that I don't know anything about. I do two things to it. I put a very small main jet in it and I drop this needle down. And there's a reason why. That needle being dropped down will lean it, will lean it out. And the lean mixture runs really good. It idles nice. It accelerates nice off the throttle stop. It gives you a good crisp response. And it tunes nice with the air fuel mixture screw. So I want to keep this lean. I'm probably never I'll probably never richen it up. Because once you're above one-third throttle, this needle plays no part in how their bike's running. If you're drag racing, you're gonna get into this. But if you're just looking for top speed, this needle plays no part. Your low-end jet plays no part in top speed. The only thing that plays any part is that main jet. So you want the biggest main jet possible, and that seems to be the answer on the internet when that question's asked, which size main jet do I put in there? Guys are gonna tell you 140, 125, things like that. But here's how you need to tune your carburetor. Grab your smallest main jet you can. If the carburetor came to you, from eBay or Amazon or whatever, it's gonna already have a small jet in it. It's probably gonna have a 78 in it, you know, 80, something like that. And uh, that small jet's good, keep that. That's where you're gonna start your tuning. We're gonna get the bike running perfectly with that little teeny jet, that 78, whatever, whatever your small one is. And then we're gonna work that jet up. We're gonna work it up with the bracketing theory. You're either gonna get a better result or a worse result. And you're gonna keep working it up until you get that worse result and then go back down. Then when you do more mods to your engine, you get to work it up again. But you already have a good starting point where you are. So anytime I get a new engine or a friend's engine that runs like ass, the first thing I do is put a small jet in it. I drop the needle. I tune it for that, and then I work the jet up. You're gonna take that float bowl off about a hundred times. So we have our baby main jet installed. We've got our needle drop down to lean position from the middle. Just had a power surge. And the next step will be to adjust it. So this is a VM22, it's a pretty popular carburetor with the uh, 212s, but uh, like I said, same as all the others. So we know we've got a screw somewhere over here that's going to let fuel out of the float bowl, that's that one. Don't got to worry about that. We're going to have another way to adjust the throttle, and it could be this one right here, which uh, I would say it is. It lines up with that slide pretty good. So where in the hell is the air idle mixture screw? Oh my gosh, 
some psychopath put it underneath the carburetor. Let's see if I can get a picture of it here. Now, remember I told you that the only screw on the float bowl drains fuel from the float bowl. That screw looks like it's on the float bowl, but it's not. If you take the float bowl off, that screw stays in place. So that's your adjustment screw right there. So we have a brand new engine and we just don't know where to start. We've got our carburetor, our little nibby or our chikuni or whatever it may be. Uh, we got pretty close to the right size. We know just from asking buddies and looking online and seeing what all the guys run. Um, be reasonable with that. Don't don't try to run what these uh, super fast guys are running. You know, run, run a appropriate carburetor to what your mods are, but give yourself some growth room with it. To, now we want to start this thing up and the problem a lot of guys have is they can't get it to start they can't they can't initially get the thing to run so they can at least adjust it so here's the best way to adjust it before starting it ever is uh, be a little lean on your needle like I talked about have it drop down from the middle on your main jet be super lean because it will run lean but it may not run rich if it's so rich that fuel is going around that needle it's not going to run. Um, the needles do actually match the main jets, and you get to a point where the uh, main jet is too big around for the needle. You're supposed to go up in a needle diameter. Uh, we don't do that though. That's more of the uh, the high end motocross guys. The idle screw doesn't matter because we can control the throttle when we start it. If it's not set at the right idle, who cares? But the other one that does matter is the air fuel mixture. This is the one that will keep us from starting. That one is hidden underneath there. The starting point for this is about one and a half turns out. The entirety of its operation and its life should live between one and two turns out from seated. And don't crank down on it, just lightly seat it, back it out a turn and a half. And that's gonna give you a great starting point. So with those adjustments, the bike should start. And I think and have confidence that it will with a nice lean system. Don't get carried away and excited to go super fast and go 80 miles an hour with your big rich jet now. That's going to come later. So you crank the bike up and you use this to get it idling. Your idled adjustment screw and your throttle. You'll have to hold the throttle open a little bit, you know, keep it running. Or maybe you'll have to back this out, but get it idling. Once the bike is warmed up and idling, and it should be warm for this because you want it to uh, behave like it's going to behave when it's all heated up and you've been riding it. Once it's warmed up and idling, you go to your air fuel mixture screw down here or on the side or wherever it is and you start turning it in. You turn it in until the idle drops down a little bit and then stop. Then you start bringing it out and the idle will come up and you keep bringing it out. We're talking small movements and the idle's gonna come up. So I usually back it out about one quarter of a turn or less, maybe one eighth of a turn, barely a movement. And then I wait a little bit. It'll take some time to catch up because that fuel's still being burned in there that it got before. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. It'll let a few seconds pass and you'll hear the idle change. And if the idle goes up, bring it out another eighth or a quarter turn. And if the idle goes up, bring it out again. There will be a point where that idle drops. You have too much fuel for the air. At that point, back it back in that one eighth or quarter turn. You're looking for the highest idle. Now the bike's idling good. That's this adjustment down here. Now remember, we're gonna adjust the RPM of the idle here, but not the quality of the idle. So we've got the quality of the idle running really good. It sounds nice. It's not sputtering or anything. We've got the RPM set, and then you crack the throttle. It should run good. Um, this needle adjustment, we're gonna play with that later. That's your, uh, let's say your zero to 30 times. That plays a big part in that acceleration and that quick takeoff. That that initial launch is going to be a lot of this needle. 
Once that launch is over, you're all in the main jet. So we'll raise that needle later if you need to, to make your launches quicker. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and run this bike. I'm going to use an app on the phone. I'm going to use an app that shows acceleration, maybe 0 to 30, maybe 8 to mile, um, something in small denominations. I, the one I have I think is um, 0 to 10 miles an hour, 0 to 20, 0 to 30, and it keeps stepping up all the way to faster than this bike will go, you know. So uh, that's going to tell you how well it accelerates. And then of course you want your top speed, you know, your bragging one, and uh, you want to get a top speed reading. When you're running it, if it's lean, it's going to pop and backfire. If it's rich, it's going to bog down, but that doesn't matter. Don't make any hasty adjustments because of that. We already expect it not to be right. That's why we're going to tune it. So record or screenshot that run you just did. And then we're going to make an adjustment to that main jet and we're going to try for better or worse. But we don't care if these jets aren't set perfectly because they don't matter at top speed. They don't matter at full throttle runs. We don't want to have to change them every time we change a main jet. We don't want to have to make an adjustment to these. So as long as the thing cranks up and runs, leave these as they are. We'll make our main jet adjustments. Once we get that main jet where we love it, where it's sweet, that half, you know, one third to a full throttle, nice top speed, nice crisp feel then we can go back and adjust these and I know that's not the standard but that's the way I do it after that run you're gonna pop your float bowl off you're gonna take that 78 out or whatever you had you're gonna put in an 80 don't get carried away because trust me the phone app will tell you the truth what the bike feels like not the truth. Seat of the pants tuning never works. A nice smooth power curve with no dips in it does not feel that fast. But when you have a poor power curve and then all of a sudden the power curve catches up and takes a spike, it gives you a real thrill of acceleration and you think your bike is fast. But it may not be. So always use your phone app. Record your run with your 80 in it. Come back. Put an 85 in it, put a 90 in it, whatever your next size jet is. Keep doing that. You're gonna get, you're gonna get into the 100s. Um, might get up to 105, but you are gonna notice this thing fall off. And it's gonna fall off in several ways. You're gonna start losing those zero to 30 times, that quickness, that eighth mile time. That's gonna go downhill, but you might gain top speed. Then you have to make the decision, what do you want? Do you want a bike that is quick and fast off the line and crisp, or do you want one that just flat out runs top speed? Uh, the top speed is fun, but a crisp, leaner bike is enjoyable. So that's your call. But a lot of that sluggishness, if you find a good top speed jet that's pretty big, a lot of that slug sluggishness you can now tune out with your uh, smaller needles. You can uh, make adjustments to these and these and your air screw mixture. You can get it running pretty good from that zero to one third throttle range. You finally got a jet in there that's big enough that when you uh, try to do a top speed run, it bogs down. It starts missing, not popping, but it misses. It bogs and misses. It hesitates. Now you're too rich. Go back to that leaner jet that one that had your best time. Get that, get that best top speed or best time jet in there, whichever one you want to work with, and it may be the same. That's your jet, and that's what you're going to use until you make the next mod. Once you've got your uh, favorite jet in there, it's not going to be like anyone else's. So if someone asks you, hey bud, your bike runs good, what jet are you running? Don't tell them, because it doesn't matter. It's not going to work on their bike. But once you've got your bike running good, then you can start playing with that needle. 
and get a little bit crisper takeoff, a little bit more responsive. And do it the same way. Raise it a clip, use your phone app, make a run. See what your zero to 30 time is. It's gonna get better or worse. If it's better, raise it another clip. Try it again. Do it till it gets worse, then go back. And it really is that simple to tune these carbs.